Hello everyone, welcome to Payment Tech Media. In this video, we will talk about the differences between basic disk and dynamic disk. For this video demonstration, I'm using VirtualBox. And here, as we can see, VirtualBox has been installed and we have multiple different virtual machines. And for this video tutorial, I'm using Windows XP virtual machine. So let's go ahead, take a look at Windows XP. Here, I already attached multiple virtual hard disk for this video demonstration. So as we can see, if I click start, right click computer and then manage, here we can see in computer management window, if I open disk management, this window pops up. It says there are multiple different new disks attached, but it's not initialized yet. Do you want to go through the wizard to initialize it? Basically, we can click next and go through the process or we can just say cancel and then be able to maximize the computer management window which where we have disk management already selected. Here we can see the three virtual hard disk already attached to this virtual machine. And then we can just simply right click and initialize disk. We get the same window. And here we have the option to select which disk we want to initialize and attach to this virtual machine. Also, we can access disk management by simply clicking start, run and type in disk mgmt.msc for disk management.microsoft console, okay and it opens the same window and it says brand new disks already attached. Do you want to go through the process of initialization? Yes or no? So here we can click next and initialize the disks. I'm going to go ahead and click cancel and show you guys here in disk management window. We can just simply right click and initialize disk selecting all. Okay. So all the disks initialized and by default, as we can see, there are basic disk. And this is just a configuration. It's not like going to the store and saying, I want to purchase basic disk or dynamic disk. No, these are just the configuration. So in a disk management, if we want to convert basic disk to dynamic disk here, we can just simply right click and convert to dynamic. And it asks questions, which disk do you want to convert it to dynamic? But first let's go over the basic disk. I'm going to cancel this one. So here, as we can see by default, this is basic disk and on a basic disk where we have unallocated the space, it basically means there is no partitions. So on a basic disk, every time when we create a partition is actually called partitions. And by default, we can have four primary partitions to show you guys. I'm going to go ahead, right click new partition next primary partition. Next, let's say uh, 100 megabytes next D drive is fine next and then here for the file system the volume label and so on perform quick format next and finish let's create three more new partition next primary partition 100 next finish okay so here as we can see this is our four primary partitions on disk one. If I right click new partition is grayed out because again, by default on a basic disk, we can have up to four primary partitions. And what are the primary partitions? The primary partitions are the active partitions, which means we can install operating system and we can boot from. So in a case of dual boot or multi boot, we can add multiple hard drives, create primary partitions and install the operating system on other hard drives or other partitions. So again, on basic disk, we have two types of partitions. We have primary partitions and extended partitions. Let me show you guys. So if I delete one of the primary partitions, right click delete. Yes. So here I should be able to create another primary partition, right? So if I right click new partition next, these are the options primary partition, extended partitions, right? So here on this unallocated space, if I create another primary partition and if I don't use the entire size of the partition, that's it on XP, it will create the fourth primary partition and it doesn't allow me to create any other partition on unallocated space. So it will be lots of waste of spaces on unallocated space because I cannot use it. Therefore, it's better to choose extended partition next and create the entire size as extended partition and then inside extended partition we can have logical partitions remember every time when we create extended partition it will not format the extended partition it's just creating the placeholders for the logical partitions 
and then we can create logical partitions inside extended partitions and then we can format and assign drive letter be able to access it. We cannot install operating system on the logical drives. So right now we are creating extended partition and we are using the entire size. It's just basically creating a placeholder for the logical partitions. Okay, let's click next and finish. So here as we can see it's color coded. Extended partition is just did create extended partition and we do have free space. So if I right click and then create new logical, I do have the option to create logical drives. New logical drive, next, and only option available, logical drive, next, and let's say 100, next, next, NTFS, and finish. Now I have my fourth partition, but of course it is a logical drive, right? So again, the first primary partition, second primary partition, the third primary partition, and then we created one extended partition. Inside extended partition, we created a logical drive. Now we can have as many as logical drives we want as long as we have free space. Let's right click, new logical drives, next, next, let's say another 100 megabytes, next, next, and finish. Therefore, in this case, here we have one, two, three, four different virtual hard disks. This is a virtual machine, four different virtual hard disks. The first virtual hard disk, disk zero, where we have operating system installed. The second virtual hard disk, disk one, we have three primary partitions and one extended partition. And inside extended partition, so far we have two logical drives. So always logical drives goes inside extended partition and for extended partition we don't have any drive letter assigned to it. It's just a placeholder for the logical drives. If I want to create another logical drive, simply right click free space, new logical drive, next, next. Let's say for this video demonstration I'm just using 100 megabyte, next, file system, NTFS, new technology file system. We have the options for file allocation table, FAT32 or NTFS, which NTFS provides encryption and compression, FAT, FAT32 doesn't provide any encryption or compression. So NTFS is selected, next, finish, and it's creating a third logical drive. Okay, so this was an example of basic disk. Remember, again, in basic disk, only we can have up to four primary partitions. We can have one primary partition, for example, on disk two here, basic disk, right? I'm going to right click on allocated space, new partition, next. Let's use primary partition, next. Let's say um, 5000, next, and finish. So approximately half of it, I'm going to go ahead and use as primary partition, let's say five gig. The other 5 gig on allocated space, I'm going to go ahead and use the entire size as extended partition. Right click, new partition, next, extended, next, and finish. Now we have a placeholder for the logical drives. So here I can create multiple logical drives. Okay, so this is an example of having one primary partition, one extended partition, inside extended partition, having three volume drives and still having free space for more logical drives. So can I install operating system on a logical drives? No. Can I install operating system on a primary partition? Yes, because the primary partitions are bootable. It can be active partition, so we can boot from. Now can we convert from basic disk to dynamic disk? Let's see, if we right click on disk 2 where it says basic disk, let's right click and convert it to dynamic disk. And if you pay attention to these color codes and here at the bottom, so convert to dynamic disk, let's select only disk 2 here, okay, and let's convert. It says, are you sure? Be careful if this is operating system installed on this partition might not work because converting basic disk to dynamic disk might mess up the master boot record, all that. We don't have operating system installed, so click yes. Do you want to continue? Yeah. So here, as you can see, 
it did convert basic disk to dynamic disk and it did change the color to simple volume. So basically the differences between basic disk and dynamic disk in dynamic disk automatically create one big partition and then it creates volumes inside that one big partition. That's why in dynamic disk, we don't have any limitation of how many volumes we can have. And technically speaking, it's better to say volumes in a dynamic disk and saying partitions in a basic disk. Now can I convert dynamic disk to basic disk? We cannot. So if I right click, as we can see, it's grayed out. Convert to basic disk is grayed out. In order to convert back to basic disk, we have to back up our data from these volumes and then delete the volumes. Then we should go back to the basic disk. So if I right click this volume, delete, all data on this volume will be lost. We don't have any data, we just created this volume. So it's empty volume, yeah. Let's delete, right click, delete, right click, delete. And after deleting this volume, we should be able to convert this dynamic disk to basic disk. So let's right click, delete volume, yes. And now we can right click here where it says dynamic, we can convert it back to basic. So again, just keep in mind on a basic disk, we can have up to four primary partition and one extended partition. Inside the extended partition, we can have as many logical drives as we want. And also we can convert basic disk to dynamic disk. On a dynamic disk, we call it volumes. So when we convert, right click basic, convert it to dynamic disk. So here, disk two, it's dynamic disk. We can create volumes and we can have as many volumes as we want. And for the software rate, in order to be able to combine multiple hard drives to work together, it has to be dynamic disk configuration. Or if you want to create just a bunch of disks working together known as spanned volume. So for example, this disk 3, let's convert it to be dynamic disk. Okay, now we have disk 2 and disk 3 as dynamic disk. So if I right click on allocated space on disk 2, new volume, next. I should be able to see spanned as well available. Spanned known as just bunch of disk, having multiple hard drives working together to expand the capacity of the storage. And not necessarily being same size, let's say one disk could be one terabyte, another disk could be 500 gigabytes and so on. This is known as just bunch of disk. And then Stripe, having multiple hard drives working together to improve performance, faster access basically data writes across multiple drives. So here we can see there are five types of volumes. Simple is just creating partitions. Spanned, just bunch of disks, multiple hard drives working together. Stripe, data writes across multiple hard drives, improving performance. Mirrored, we have two hard drives working together. The secondary hard drive is exact duplicate of the first hard drive. In case if the hard drive fails, we do have the other hard drive up and running and we do have RAID 5, which it is also a stripe, but with the parity bits backup. So minimum of three hard drives working together and data writes across multiple hard drives. And we do have the parity bits also distributed on the hard drives. In case if one of the hard drives failed, the parity bits can reconstruct the lost data. So that's known as RAID level 5 or striping with parity bits backup. Mirrored known as RAID level 1, striped known as RAID level 0. And spanned is just a bunch of disks working together. And simple it is just one hard drive creating one simple volume on that hard drive. So I'm going to cancel and quick recap. We have basic disk and dynamic disk. We can convert basic disk to dynamic disk at any time, but we cannot convert dynamic disk to the basic disk at any time. If we have any volumes on a dynamic disk, we cannot convert it back to basic disk. We have to delete the volume and then we can convert it back to basic. So first we have to back up our data from the volume and then delete the volume, then convert back to basic. And on a basic disk, we call it partition. On a dynamic disk, we call it volume. On a basic disk, we can have up to four primary partition 
and one extended partition and inside extended partition we can have logical drives. In dynamic disk we can have as many volumes as we want. This was quick overview the differences between basic disk and dynamic disk. Hope this was helpful. In the next video we will use Windows 10 to go over exact same scenario and see the differences. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any question, please leave it in the comment section. To see more tech videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks again and have a good day.